Now, while KPMG International expects global growth to pull back slightly from 2.7% to 2.5%, the outlook for South Africa has improved from 0.6% in 2023 to 1.2% in 2024. This largely due to uh, the better-than-expected stability of the electricity grid. Frank Blackmore, lead economist for KPMG Southern Africa, joins us with his analysis on the future of the South African economy. Thank you so much for your time, Frank. Looking at the slippage of uh, GDP growth, Growth, global GDP growth between 2023 and 2024. Do we actually expect uh, you know GDP to kind of be bottoming out in 2024 globally? Yes, it looks like that to us. Um, the forecast does forecast for a marginal decrease in 2024, and the, the reason for that is basically the slow glide path of central banks in reducing interest rates around the world. I think it also speaks to the sort of dynamism of the. the Two sides to the story, the dynamism of the emerging and developing economies, which generally show an increase in growth uh, over the 2024 and 2025 year period, while developing economies are more subdued in their growth read. So when we look at the global, it doesn't tell us much about what's happening in Africa or what's to be mm. expected in Africa and other emerging markets. Uh, uh, Frank, while we uh, look at this uh, global growth story, what we also have seen uh, is just the geopolitics playing into growth prospects. I'm just keen uh, to uh, take a look at that one. Yeah. So, uh, so obviously the growth is the, the reason for the slowing growth or the fact that it hasn't grown much more than it should globally at this point is, is, is twofold. Um, both of those infecting, uh, affecting the inflation rate, which affects on, has knock-on effects on the interest rate. The first is continued price pressure and the various sources. We may get that later into, in the interview. And the other one is geopolitical risks. We still have the war going on in, the, in uh, the Ukraine. We saw what was happening in the Middle East. We've also had disruption to shipping routes in the Red Sea, as well as... Um, you know, uh, it's to other, other, other areas like the Suez Canal for weather-related reasons, those are all adding price pressures. The other, the other sort of political reasons underpinning it as well for the developed markets, things such as French shoring, near shoring, reshoring, which basically all means they're trying to get their industries out of countries that are not friendly to them. Uh, so U.S. versus China, for example closer to home but that of course has a cost implication as well and that's keeping inflation also higher for longer specifically in developed uh, countries mm. and frank talking about the fact that i mean uh, you mentioned that it seems that global economic growth will find a bottom in 2024 but it seems that in south africa um, a bottom has already been found in 2023 and actually uh, there are better prospects for the economy in 2024 talk to me about that and if all that hinges on escom yeah, well, a lot of the tinges on Eskom. Mm -hmm. I think um, the, what's it now, 100 days, yeah, no load shedding days. officially, has contributed immensely, I think, to the potential of growth in the economy over the, uh, you know, the first half of the year. So uh, I think that has been uh, worked into the, most of the forecasts here. Then I think um, th there is some other issues, economic fundamental issues. We expect uh, inflation to get to the point where the interest, uh, interest rates can be lowered towards the end of the year. Obviously, as interest rates are lowered, that gives um, consumers um, more incentive to go out and buy specifically financed goods, homes, cars, etc., because the rate that pays is less. It also gives business an incentive to go back into the market, invest, especially if the political sort of atmosphere is, is more certain. And I think from what we've seen in the markets reaction to the government of national unity that is also the case and therefore you know the higher uh, expectation for growth in south africa i think is is on the cards also interesting uh, uh, at this point uh, frank is when we look at a global unemployment and how it fares versus uh, south africa i'm keen just to get your thoughts also on this one it is uh, quite uh, a divergent picture Yes, it is. So uh, globally, so the unemployment rate hovers around 5.4% and is said to remain constant. And that's, I think, also because there's a combination of things happening. Some are decreasing, some are increasing, but on average, it's staying constant. In Africa, we still have a long way to go, whether we're talking South Africa or the rest of Africa. We've started our sort of growth and development journeys. There's still a lot to be accomplished. 
we generally have higher uh, unemployment rates, but there's sometimes structural issues for that. So what we're seeing in Africa currently is that although people are moving out of the agricultural sector into sort of the services sector, those services sectors are not particularly um, high employment type sectors that would build sort of the middle class. It's, it's, it's shelf packers, it's cashiers, it's these type of jobs. What Africa needs is not to skip over the uh, industrialization phase, because I think that brings out your lower middle skilled workers and gives them an opportunity to drastically increase their uh, wealth and uh, welfare and also to put a lot more money into the economies of the particular countries. And obviously for that, there are a number of things that we need, electricity, uh, regulations, more inter-African trade, and all these things are being worked on currently. Yeah, it's quite interesting also what's happening. I mean, you mentioned the GNU, but also on a, uh, a global front, we are seeing a change in the political regimes, which of course will affect economic policy as well. And I'm wondering how much of an influence uh, do you think the global economic landscape uh, could have on South Africa's growth picture, at least in the medium term? You know, this would only be speculation. Yeah, because I don't think yeah. any of us know how these regimes would change. I think yeah. the most important for South Africa at this point is probably the United States. Mm -hmm. They count for around 10% of um, South Africa's trade at this point in time. Um, you know, if we have a Biden, if we have a Trump, it depends what mood they're in. Yeah. You know, especially with Trump, there's a lot of uh, volatility in the decisions that are made at that point. But I think also whomever takes office there will look at the current state of South Africa and their policies. And I think the government of national unity will give uh, quite a neutral to positive view of the country going forward. So I don't see too mm -hmm. much interruption in, 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 in sort of the current policies that are still in play. All right. Well, Frank, it's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for uh, taking us uh, through this one. Uh, it's been interesting indeed. That was a lead economist for KPMG Southern Africa, Frank Blackmore. Thank <laughs> you.